Hello everyone, welcome to a tournament review for my channel. Um, this is my overview of the uh, tournament um, was Clash of Kings at Adepticon, April 3rd and 4th, 2016. Um, so just to, just to start, um, I'll, I'll just go over like an overview of, of the uh, tournament, um, show off some armies, show what I brought, and then kind of how I did. So we'll just go through it, but I had a couple of, as I would call them, uh, celebrity encounters. Um, first one, I, I met the uh, Jonathan, who, who is a channel Holy Diver. So he came out from Utah, so it was, it was fun to meet him. Um, and then my other, my other um, quick one here would be uh, Mastercrafted. Um, I met them at these guys. Um, they didn't play in the tournament. They had to uh, leave early Sunday, so they weren't able to play. So, um, and, and as a side note, this was actually taken by Jonathan or Holy Diver. So it's kind of, kind of a, a celebrity within a celebrity, you know, kind of meta. Um, so, uh, I'll just go over some random armies here quick. Um, everybody was setting up, um, Saturday morning. Um, so I just kind of was going around while I had time to take pictures and I'll get into the whole time thing later. But anyway, um, so yeah, there was, um, there was a reasonable amount of, a variety out there, um, plenty of elves, plenty of undead, um, a lot of stuff like that. Like this, this guy actually, I guess, painted this army the day before. Um, I think it looks fine. Uh, I don't. I mean, it's just it's just three colors with an airbrush. Um, I, I mean, the the effects okay, but yeah. Um, this guy is a bunch of bunch of Skaven. Um, you can also see this too. This is another thing I really liked about this tournament. Um, this, these are uh, the tables we played on, but there is a, a divider. Um, every table got a couple extra feet like this to put stuff on. So that was pretty sweet. Um, another shot of that army. Um, I'm not sure what this actually even was. I didn't play him. Um, here's some Abyssal Dwarves. Um, yeah, a lot of people brought display boards. I didn't. Um, I knew I wasn't in best running and, and I'll go over that later, but to be, to be in best painted, you actually had to have, um, some proportion of Mantic models and I didn't have them. So, um, and I think this might actually be the guy who won best painted, um, this ogre or orc army. Sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. I think he might've actually won, but yeah, again, lots of undead, lots of undead and more orcs. So, um, I didn't take a picture of every army that was out. I didn't actually have time. Um, but I'll go over my list really quick. Uh, so, it was a 2,500-point tournament. Um, all the standard rules, I think I think the only restriction was, like, one living legend or something. I don't know. It wasn't much. There was really no restrictions. It was pretty much just by the book. So, I brought one regiment of berserkers, the Brew of Strength, uh, two troops of uh, ironclad, uh, two ranger troops, two regiments of iron guard, two-handed weapon upgrade, and throwing dogs on each of them, uh, two hordes of earth elementals, uh, one with blessing of the gods, and one with chant of hate, two iron belcher organ guns, two greater earth elementals, one army standard bearer, uh, one berserker lord, I mounted him on his brock, and gave him the blade of beast slayer, that is if you want to know what that is, that is a plus two crushing strength against monsters, monsters, infantry, monsters, cavalry, and heroes without the individual special rule. Uh, a ranger captain with wings of the honey maze and two stone priests, both with the bane chant upgrade. Um, so just uh, some more logistics. I thought I was I was out was putting stuff away today. So here's here's how I, I travel with my army. Um, this is a the large case from from table war. Um, they make a variety of these cases with and without uh, windows. Um, there's just another side of it and parts, parts of my house. Um, here's just kind of another look to see. You can see like um, what, what it kind of looks like. Um, it's very helpful in this case. Um, I have metal plates and those guys are sitting on metal plates. Um, so I have them kind of corralled on their movement trays. And then the individuals um, have magnets under them. So they actually kind of hold everybody in place and it's really easy to move from table to table like this um, and just put it in and put it away um, because I didn't, I didn't bring a display board. 
uh, again, because I, well, I wasn't going to win Best Painting, I couldn't, um, this was just a really easy way for me to, to plop in and plop them out and, and go and go, so it's it's a pretty pretty good setup, I mean, I like them, I like this case a lot, um, you, one thing you could notice, and I'll go back a picture here, you can see that there's a lot of extra room, <laughs> so uh, in the back, you can see here, um, we, we, that was the biggest, that's the biggest case they make. Um, and so, uh, a couple of weeks before the tournament, I, my wife was like, well, why don't, why don't you just order a smaller one? Cause you don't, you don't need a lot of space and it, it might be nice to have another one. So I ordered it and it, and it showed up, um, today, which is if I'm making this video, I've already gone to the tournament. So it, it's okay. It's, I'm glad it's here. <clears throat> so, um, I'll go, I'll go into my army here a little bit, what I brought. Um, more specifically and like how I kind of expect these things to work. Um, if you watch my tournament review for the last tournament I went to, I kind of run my armies in, um, self-contained groupings. So, um, the, the first grouping in this, in this case is, a, um, a stone priest with a horde of earth elementals and a greater earth elemental. So, and the stone priest inspires them. He surges them and he can bane chant. So, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty standard grouping. Um, these are the guys I just did before the tournament because I really wanted more earth elementals. Um, I, I like them a lot. Um, I, li I like earth elementals a lot. So, uh, and here's a picture without the flash. I just took with him without. Um, my light box isn't great, but it does okay. So, group one. <laughs> and, and not surprising, group two um, is the exact same thing. Um, except the... the these Earth Elementals were my, my uh, elite ones. The other ones were vicious. Um, Earth Elementals put out a, a fairly good number of attacks, I mean, 18 attacks, but they only hit on four ups, and they only have Crushing Strength 1. So, well, they're really tough and good for surging around. They're not super offensive. Um, so it's just nice to give them a, a little extra pip of, of damage output. And it's the same thing why I actually bring Bane Chant. Um, I find Bane Chanting the Earth Elementals... They don't, Greater doesn't need it, of course, because he has Crushing Streak 3, but Bane Chaining the regular guys works out pretty good. So here's my non-flash picture. So this would be my third semi-autonomous unit. <clears throat> a grouping. Uh, two troops of rangers and a ranger captain. A uh, ranger captain has wings of the honey maze. Um, he is a war machine hunter and just general disruptor. He does really good at that. Um, the rangers, I I generally find that they, they do a really good job of just a little bit of everything. Um, they bring some range. It's not great. I mean, it's, you know, 10 shots hitting on fours with no piercing. But they do have Crushing Strength 1. They do have Pathfinder. They do have Vanguard. And they do move 5 inches. So it's it, they're, they're worth their money. Um, I don't use them as chaff generally because they are 135 points for a troop, which is a little high for chaff. Um, but they, they serve their purpose well. People generally pay a lot more attention to them than they probably need to. And if they don't, they're, uh, they're going to get some... Get some uh, rangers in the flank. So, yeah, um, there's the the non the non uh, flash shot. If you want to see it, I brought two organ guns. Um, a lot of the actually reason of bringing these organ guns was that 2,500 points is actually a little awkward for me. Uh, I normally don't play that level, um, and trying to, you know, I had an, an extra set of points, and 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 these guys work pretty good just on their own. Um, people generally can't ignore two organ guns and they're not a lot of points, about like 85 points each. Um, so they can, you know, hold off a, a square of the table. Um, they'll, they'll draw attention and, and being, you know, I guess like their defense five headstrong. So, um, normally more than just a couple points of damage to get rid of them, which is, you know, pretty beneficial because they'll get off 30 shots and they kill a few things in the tournament, and you know overall they perform really well. They're, and here's the next shot of them. Um, they're really the only dwarf artillery I care much for. Um, you know, I I generally play a fairly mobile army, so um, cannons kind of don't get line of sight, um, and it's really expensive for what it does. And the the bombard is it's okay, it's very expensive, and then the um, flame belter, and it's it's okay, but it's got no piercing, so, you know, eh, anyway, so, um, semi-autonomous unit, next one, um, uh, berserkers, um, 
so I have a, a regiment of berserkers. Um, I give them the brew of strength because they don't have any crushing strength. They do have 25 attacks, which is pretty sweet. Um, they hit on fours, which is less sweet, but it's okay. Um, and they move five. So I like berserkers fine. Um, the only the only thing I would say about berserkers, compared to the Brock Riders, they're not worth it. I mean, they're they're not worth it at all. Actually, for for a points wise, I think the Brock Riders are underappointed. So I mean, just especially just if you consider a regiment to a regiment size, um, the Brock Riders are thirty points more for a regiment. But but for thirty points, you get plus three speed, plus one defense. I think it's like plus one attack, uh, thunderous charge one, and vicious. So I mean, that that's like a ton of stuff for 30 points. And, and, and the only downside really being is, again, 30 points in a slightly larger footprint. So I did these berserkers without really doing that beforehand. And in the end, I probably wouldn't do them again. Um, they're OK. I think they're a lot more appropriate in troop size than they are in regiments. I, I don't think the regiment is worth it. Um, that that's just my thought on it. I mean, for for points to points, like a troop of berserkers is good. It turns out a ton a ton of attacks for what it is, um, but a regiment, no, not really. Um, and running around with them and occasionally not with them is the uh, berserker lord on Brock. Um, I like the, I like the berserker lord on Brock. Uh, the blade of beast slayer gives him crushing strength three against. Um, well, he he's generally there to hunt big things um he's not going to do that much damage to an infantry block with only eight attacks but um any anything flying around he has a 16 inch 360 degree charge range so that's pretty good he's also vicious on that brock so he was um he was pretty helpful um you know he he people have to think about him he can also go hunt war machines too um and he does that a couple times over the tournament it, with the uh, ranger captain if he doesn't have anything else to beat up um he's really not that like I said, he's really not that great if like you're fighting big hordes of infantry because he's not going to chop through them and they're probably going to chop him up but against like regiments and stuff he's got a 17 nerve so he'll hold out for a while um and then this is my last um kind of autonomous unit these are my my dwarves for for all intents and purposes these are the, the foot sloggers so um, go to this picture. So it's um two troops of ironclad. So they're they're sitting out front. Um, they're they're basically my chaff. They're seventy five points. Um, about as cheap as a dwarf unit as you can get. Um, and they generally screen and they they actually do a really good job of screening because they are ten twelve, headstrong, um, defense five. So, you know it's. If you don't have piercing and you're shooting at them, and it happened in one of my games, they're going to hold out for a couple turns, and they're going to keep moving forward. It's hard to, it's 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 kind of hard to knock them out. Um, next picture here, just a little more of an upper picture, but uh, army standard bear in there. Um, sometimes I give the army standard bear an item, but in, in this list, it really didn't come out to <clears throat> have anything to give him. Um, if I do give him something, it's generally like the boomstick or <clears throat> excuse me, something something along that nature. And with them are the two regiments of Iron Guard. Um, I like Iron Guard pretty good, uh, especially with the two-handed weapon upgrade. They stay defense five, uh, nerf 15, 17. They hit on threes, you know, and headstrong like all dwarfs. So they're, they're pretty good. Um, the only the only problem I oftentimes have with them is the screen doesn't die. So I normally screen my Iron Guard with these Ironclad and and more often than not the ironclad make it um across the board into the enemy where i'm like oh well, that that's good um and, and i think that was probably a mistake with me playing them a few times because if i if i wasn't fighting significant enough shooting there's there's no reason f really for my ironclad to be totally blocking up my iron guard but so that's it but normally these guys moved as a somewhat of a turtle just sliding forward and then i did put those those are the dogs my my my, my wife made me some super vicious dogs and they get thrown occasionally. Um, I don't know if I'm sold on throwing dogs. Um, it's just there's just not that often of good targets. Like like a really obviously good target would be like zombies or, or things like that. But I never did play undead in this tournament. Um, the the one good target I realized a little late to throw dogs at was like like a, a phoenix from Basilia, 
because their defense three. Um, but you know, I did throw one dog at him, and it was, it was kind of funny. But so here's a just a picture, one of the two pictures of my my whole army. Um, I do I do kind of have a, attempted to do a theme here with the um, like kind of like a Napoleon in the desert was always my my original idea. Um, so they're not, they're not dirty. They're supposed to look, you know, clean, like they're marching through the desert, um, kind of a look. Um, so that's, I mean, that's what I went for. I, I, I like the, the overall aesthetic of these guys. Um, I think they came out pretty good. Yeah. So, um, here's a quick overview of, um, the games I played and how they went. So, um, we played book all the all the all the things and I'll, and I'll go over this again but all the games were just out of the book um this was the order of them we played kill so yeah i'll go real quick kill um i got paired up against dwarves turn first round um and it wasn't an army too unlike my own um actually not really much unlike my own at all um this person just happened to have like instead of hordes of earth but well, she did have one horde of earth elementals, but it was more like hordes of ironclad and hordes of um, bull workers and, and a few more dwarf bodies than I tend to run. Um, and I, I, I mean, it was a tie, and I, I pulled ended up pulling out to an eleven nine um, because I had like I think I killed ten more points than she did, so so that that caused the attrition to shift it to a technically like a minor win for me, I guess if you want to call it that. Um, which was, you know, I'll, I'll, I have pictures of these games and I'll go over them later, but just want to get this really quick. Uh, game two, I, I, I ran up to another dwarfs player. So I thought, wow, this is, this is going to be funny if I play dwarves the entire tournament. Um, the game was loot and I did really good. Um, the, uh, terrain helped me out a lot. This person had some shooting hordes and just didn't, I was able to, um, outmaneuver and really take advantage of the scenario. So it would mean it was, it was a pretty foregone conclusion from the start um game three was dominate uh, i ended up against a varenger opponent the guy actually took second place um and it was a it was an interesting game um i i don't normally ever like to concede that my dice at least lost me this game but it lost me a game but both my opponent and I agreed that my dice lost me the, this game. Um, it, it was probably more like a tie um, in the long run. Um, but I don't, I don't think I made more than like one nerve roll against him than I ever had to make. It was, it was, it was tiring, especially by that time in the day. I was. Just, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'll go over that later. It was still really fun, and my opponent was really, really nice about it. You know, and it was, it was interesting to see some of those things. Um, game four was pillage uh, against an elf army and this was an interesting elf army um it was it was an entirely shooting army i'll go over that in a minute or i'll go over that in the video when i talk about the battle but he had like seven bolt throwers um something like 170 shots in total so it was, it was all bolt throwers it was all sea guards and it was all scouts so um no no magic items no inspiring nothing um so and, and it was pillage so it, w it was kind of an interesting game and this one my opponent um the game went to turn seven and he let his time run out um he he knew he it was his turn because he had he went first i didn't get to play my turn seven and he let his time run out because he knew he was going to lose and it was probably going to be like a 15 five and he said you know what at, at this point in time i'm just going to give it to you um, I'm not in the running for anything anymore. I'm just going to sit here and let my, cause he was, he was down to like 35 seconds or something and he could have, he could have done it, but he was like, nope, you get it all yours. So that's why I got the 20 zero, um, game five. Um, I played against Basilia. It was, it was very much so a flying circus, um, and flying circus and invade is, well, you know, it is, um, my opponent didn't have to engage me at any point in time. She didn't want to. And really, I, I, I got very little. Um, I got quite a bit across the board, but when when my opponent can just hit and run, I mean, there's nothing I can do. So um, I'll go over that later. But she had she had like two hordes of Basilia, or two hordes of angels. What are they called? Elohi. Um, two phoenixes. 
and carry like a paladin on a dragon and a paladin on a griffin and it was just like well i can't i can't touch those things so you know it's just what it was um game six i played um abyssal dwarves for kill and pillage and it was a it was a a bit of a, a downer of a, of a I, I had a fun time and i know my opponent had a good time which he was actually it was it was an interesting guy um he he said he had a really fun game because at least I wasn't super overly serious about it because we're, we're at the, at that point in time we're not going to place you know and I was like you know let's just have some fun but it it was another one of those games where I didn't make like a single nerve check and I kept it was like two double ones and and I had the game like it was just one of those things where you where you you set it up really well um, you take advantage of like everything you could have. You get all the flanks, you get all the fronts, you do all these rears, and then you just whiff, like whiff and whiff and fail and fail, and it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just really frustrating. Um, I was glad my opponent had a good time, and honestly, halfway through that game, I was, <laughs> I I just finished it out, because I knew my opponent was having fun, I, I didn't want to play anymore. Um, not not against the, the game itself, it was just... I don't know. I was just getting a little bummed at that point in time, and I was I was tired, <laughs> really, really tired. Um, so uh, results, um, I got I placed twenty out of thirty four. Um, not great, but what are you gonna do? Uh, I got fifty six tournament points, as they call it, and I and I got full painting, but that was only like five points, I think, were added. So painting was basically non existent for scoring in this tournament. Um, and on that, yeah, so, uh, I wasn't in the running for best painting. Um, you had to have something like 75% of your model count had to be Mantic models, Mantic specific. And so it's not even size, like, like proportionally, like if you took the volume of my models, they might be like half Mantic just because of those huge earth elementals, but no, no, I'm not, it's fine. Um, I got, I got good painting scores otherwise, um, but I couldn't get anything because again, not made to come, but I, I was surprised to see that I tied third for best sports. Um, I, I do think I tried to stay really positive over the course of the games and, and had fun. Um, everybody was, everybody was nice. Like there was never any rules questions. Um, you know, any of that. Um, and I'll, and I'll get into the, the chess clock and time thing in a little while, but I, I probably did also get best sports because or I didn't get best sports, but I did good in sports. Um, because there was a lot of times where here, we'll go to this next page. So here I'll, I'll explain why I think I did good. <laughs> um, the tournament mechanics are six rounds, 2,500 points. Um, each game was allotted two hours. Um, and the, the requirement, although not very well enforceable because they didn't, they didn't provide us chess clocks, but they required us to have some sort of a chess clock like apparatus. Um, we all have smartphones or iPads or stuff to stay, so that's not hard to come up with. Um, but the requirement was each side got 55 minutes, so you had 55 minutes to deploy and to play your game. So okay, uh, and then like I said, the scenarios were all from the book with a 15, 5, 10 scoring points, and then plus or minus attrition. Um, attrition could go up to f it, it was either one to five. Well, it was technically zero to five, but I don't. The only way you could have attrition be plus and minus zero would be as if you actually equally killed the exact same number of points, which is probably not very likely. I guess if both people just sat still the whole game, you'd probably tie, tie. But that, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so they didn't they didn't provide chess clocks. Um, but, the, but the thing that, that I found is, so I, I went into each game, and then I, uh, and I asked my opponent, I said, do you want us to use a chess clock because I don't care. Um, I'm a fairly fast player. I knew I wasn't going to be able to do my normal battle report with the pictures and I wasn't intending to. And, and the funny thing that came out of it was my opponents that were more serious about using the chess clock were also the ones that I had to essentially give um, free rolls against so they wouldn't run out of time. It was it was kind of an odd dichotomy in that in that way because they were both like yeah we have to use chess clocks that's a rule you know and, and then they were and they were both like you know it keeps it keeps keeps people honest I like chess clocks 
is, is what they, is what they said. It's, well, that's fine. But there was occasions when they're like, oh no, I have to roll 54 dice against your war machine. And I would say, and they were down, you know, to like a couple minutes left or something at the, at the end of the game. I'm like, you know what? Don't do it. Don't roll 54 dice. Just don't roll double ones and you can have it. And, and, and I think that's probably what helped me out in sports a lot, but it was, it was, it was just, it was just weird because the people who liked, seemed to like chess clocks were also the ones who would, would have hurt the most. Because yeah, sure, I could have been a dick about it. I could have said, no, you roll those, you roll those 58, 54 dice and then you rolled a wound and then you roll, you know, I, I wasn't going to do that. That's not fun. And and I'll talk about that in a little bit more. So I want to stay positive as much as possible because I, I know I, I can tend to ramble and get really unpositive about things. So anyway, uh, the things I liked about the tournament itself, and this isn't about the convention or anything around it, um, I was I was pretty happy they did the book scenarios. Um, I think I think the book scenarios are pretty fair um, for the most part. Um, well, I shouldn't say fair. I don't think they're fair necessarily. Um, I think they're... They're well known, um, and people know them, and, and that's good. Um, not having something weird or with lots of rules plays out really well. Um, the only problem I generally sometimes have with the book scenarios is certain scenarios really favor flyers, and I know that's a, con- a contentious stance to take. I guess on it, you could say, um, but I'm especially even after this, I'm I'm fully convinced that that flying is overpowered in this game. Um, anyway, uh, scoring for the tournament was easy to figure, easy to figure out. It was, you know, five, 10, 15s, and then just plus or minus some number of points. Pretty straightforward. Um, one really nice thing in these tables, the tables had a good mix of terrain and there was plenty of it. So everybody had two woods, several hills, um, obstacles and a building or two. So all the tables were pretty much the same, which I think actually is just fine. Um, they had good mats on them. They had just some nice, you know, printed mats. So everybody got to play on a nice looking table and it had plenty of terrain. So that helped, I think, keep the games a little bit more honest. Um, it certainly helped me when I placed that, face that giant gun line that I was able to stand behind walls and stuff. So, um, a few of the non-positives and I'll try not to get too bad into this, but so 2,500 points in Kings of War is, is, is a little bigger than what I like. Um, I don't... I don't think 2,500 points always crowds the board too much. Um, I generally play more elite armies, so that's not as big of an issue for me, but some of my opponents definitely had problems deploying, especially when they ran lots and lots of hordes, because with all the terrain on the table, it was a little hard for them to deploy and maneuver, you know, which is part of the game. I, you know, I get that, but I think 2,000 points is a little better. It's a little more room to breathe with still having lots of stuff on the table, but that's just a personal opinion. Um, On to the chess clocks. Um, 2,500 points with 55 minutes is, is more than enough time for me to play a game, but not enough time for me to enjoy the game. Um, a big part of um, this this game and I don't mind playing competitively and I don't mind playing well-tuned lists without fluff, but I like to be able to have time to take pictures and I like to be able to chat about things like, like one one of my opponents at one point in time had to use the bathroom during the middle of a game. And she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can can I use the bathroom? Like, of course you can use the bathroom. What, what kind of monster am I? To be like, no, your time's going to run out when you go use the... Yeah. Anyway. So, there just wasn't... There was... I never ran out. Like, let me put it this way. I always had at least 15 or fifteen minutes left on my clock. Because um, my army isn't that complicated. It walks forward and it, and it smashes into you. It's not, it's not that hard for me to play. But, it was just... I don't know. It, it wasn't that much time. Um, and this falls into the next point. Like, we played four games in one day at 2,500 points. So, four games of Kings of War, twenty five hundred points in one day is a lot. Like it's it's a lot more than I want to play. By the by the th- end of the third game, I'm wiped. Um, I've played three games before. You know that's that's not something in, uncommon when I when I meet one of my standard opponents. We we'll play three games, but this was just a lot of games. Um, and 
And I understand that Masters has set up, so if you want to be a Masters qualifier, it has to be a two-day, six-game event. But bleh. I would I would much rather see, <clears throat> if you have to do 2,500 points, three games the first day. And if you have to use a chess clock, give people give people something like 75 minutes, 80 minutes per side. You know, 75 minutes per side. That'll give everybody plenty of time. You know, we can do all the things. And if someone's really, really slow playing, you know, okay. But that's just my thing. Those those are the only things I really didn't like about it. Um, over, overall, it was, it was plenty of fun. Um, final thoughts, yeah. I mean, I like playing Kings of War. I like talking about Kings of War. Um, but would I go... Would I go to another con- tournament like this with these time constraints, um, especially a tournament I have to drive five hours to get to? No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go back. If this was just like this next year, I wouldn't go. Um, the convention was interesting. Um, I'd never been to Adepticon or a tabletop gaming convention before, um, and that was kind of fun. The The downside was it for me was I didn't have um, enough time to go demo games. Like I got to walk through the vendor hall and buy a couple things. And, and that was fun. Um, and you know, you could say, well, Scott, you should have shown up on Thursday and you know, well, I had to work, but anyway, um, that was cool. There was lots of stuff to see in demo. Um, and a lot of fun things like that. But as, as far as like playing the tournament, I didn't, I didn't really have that much fun, um, in the long run. And I, and I look back at it. I'm not maybe as annoyed as it was when I went, but Eh, it just is. Um, I thought about originally going up to Lady of the Lake GT, but they haven't released how they're going to schedule their six games yet. So I'm probably going to hold off at this point in time to commit to see what they're going to do. Um, their games are going to be a little smaller, but it's still six days, six games over two days, and it's seven something hours drive. So eh. we'll see. We'll see. Um, otherwise, um, sorry, ranting a lot. Um, I hope you get something out of this and I'll kind of cluster up some battle reports I made from these in the coming days. I'll probably do like two games per report cause I don't have very many pictures cause I was too busy shoving models around the table and pushing a chess clock. So anyway, um, thanks guys. And we'll catch you next time.